Okay guys, coming back to you with a video. So this video is about Donald Trump interview in 1980 with Rona Barrett, Reeling in the Years archives. So um, I've been seeing this go, go around and I wanted to see it for myself. Um, and you know, let's just go ahead and look at this and then come back and react. Or not come back and react, but I'll just react. An edited version is 47 minutes long. Donald Trump was 34. You are a mover, you are a doer. If you could make America perfect, how would you do it? Well, I think that America is a country that has tremendous, tremendous potential. I think that much like the mind, I think that America is using very, very little of its potential. I feel that this country with the proper leadership can go on to become what it once was. And I hope and certainly hope that it does go on to be what it, uh, what it should be. What should it be? Well, it should, be a, it should really be a country that gets the respect of other countries. Today, Is respect the most important thing in your opinion? Well, respect can lead to other things. When you get the respect of the other countries, then the other countries tend to do a little bit as you do and you can create the right attitudes. The, the Iranian situation is a case in point. That they hold our hostages is just absolutely and totally ridiculous. That this country sits back and allows a country such as Iran to hold our hostages, to my way of thinking, is a horror. And I don't think they'd do it with other countries. I honestly don't think they'd do it with other countries. Obviously, you're advocating that we should have gone in there with troops, etc., and brought our boys out. I absolutely out. feel that, yes. I don't. Yep, okay, look, me being a veteran, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't give a fuck about the higher-ups, the, the bureaucrats who don't even go out there or have the balls to go out there and fight for the wars that they start. When I joined and I had to go overseas, the person to my left and the and my right were the ones I were more concerned about. I don't give a fuck what color you are, or I don't give a crap what religion you're from. The fact that you are able you are able and willing to put on a uniform and fight and defend a foreign country, you know, granted it might have been under illusion of propaganda, but you didn't know that. Um, the fact that you would do with so many who wouldn't, who would come back. Uh, who would stand back and spew just spill and spew hatred at the country um, in order for them to even sit there and say that you defended their their rights to sit there and say that and they won't even acknowledge that as a blessing when they could be in other countries where they will never ever ever have that ability because if they did they will be fucking shot and buried underground so yeah when it comes to um, you know, my, you know, brothers and sisters who join the service, it, it becomes, um, different. Something is different when you go overseas. Um, and, uh, you know, they're put in harm's way or they're captured. Of course you want to do whatever you can to get them back. Um, obviously you're not going to do it in a hot hand manner, a hot head manner, but you'll definitely be more strategic, uh, and have a surgical approach with it. So, um, yeah, I'm 100% on board with this, the way that he's thinking and the way that he feels about all of his fellow Americans. If there's any question, there's no question in my mind. I think right now would be an oil-rich na nation, and I believe that we should have done it, and I'm very disappointed that we didn't do it, and I don't think anybody would have held us in abeyance. I don't think anybody would have been angry with us, and we had every right to do it at the time. I think we've lost the opportunity. For some people, the ultimate goal in life uh, has been becoming the President of the United States. Would you like to be the President of the United States? I really don't believe I would, Rona, but I would like to see somebody as the President who could do the job, and there are very capable people in this country. Most people who are capable are not running for office. It, Most men are frightened true. of politics today. It is a shame, isn't it? Yes. It is a shame. The most capable people are not necessarily running for political and the reason why there's so many reasons why because the public don't want to hear hard news the public wants to be coddled a lot of the times or at least this generation does 
You know, it's not the same generation or the same attitudes as uh, um, in America like it was during Reagan's time. Um, and it is easier to garnish votes when you play mind games and manipulate people into believing that you'll do what they want you to do. Um, and therefore they, you know, they play on those fears. They play on those hopes that you, once you are elected, you'll give them what they want. Um, however, a lot of the times, as we have seen, a lot of things that the people want when it comes to handouts, it actually makes their situations worse. So I think if you actually are a politician who really wants the best for the American people and you say it out loud, um, the things that would have to change or in order for this to happen, even if you have the evidence to show that, Hey, this will turn our, the trajectory of our economy around. Okay. Um, they, uh, most likely if it requires you cutting back certain programs, you, it's, it's political suicide. So that's why the individuals who are the most logical, who are, who approach solving these situations in the most logical manner, they're never elected because at the end of the day, it will cause more hurt than, um, um, than, well, at least for the moment, for a brief moment. And, you know, individuals are more inclined to instant gratification than to sit back and wait and, um, over a period of time and slowly grow into the wealth or slowly grow into, um, the individual that they hope to be. It's always about instant gratification. And like I said, uh, the ones who have the knowledge, um, they will, they will get turned at every which way because of they'll just be more real with it. And the more real you are in society, we know they hate you more. And that is a very sad commentary on the country. They had major corporations and they had this and that, but they are not running for political office. Why wouldn't someone like yourself run for political office? You have all the money that you possibly need. You've accomplished a great deal, even though you are only 34. I know there's a lot of things that you possibly can do in the years ahead. Why wouldn't you dedicate yourself to public service? Because I think it's a very mean life. I, I would love and I would, I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life. And I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. Yep. And that's a sad commentary for the political process. Yep television in a strange way has ruined that process, hasn't it? It's hurt the process very much. I mean, the Abraham Lincolns of the world. Abraham Lincoln would probably not be electable today because of television. He was not a handsome man and he did not smile at all. He would not be considered to be a prime candidate for the presidency. And that's a shame, isn't it? But if all the men are like you, then when are we going to get somebody who might be good? I don't know. I hope it's around the corner, but I don't know. I really don't know. What I would like to be involved in is trying to help choose somebody or working with a group of people whereby they put up a candidate who would be acceptable to be a presidential, you know, uh, to, to be the president. The country, if we had the one man, and it's really not that big a situation. You know, people say, well, what could anybody do as president? The one man could turn this country around. The one proper president could turn this country around. I firmly believe that. If you lost your fortune today, what would you do tomorrow? Maybe I'd run for president. I don't know. Okay, look. Um, That man, the only difference between then and now was back then he was a Democrat when he said all this stuff. Make America great again? That sounds exactly what I just heard back in 1980. So why all of a sudden with him saying that in, the night, uh, in today's time that makes him a racist? This man obviously has shown, he has not changed, changed his stance on 
anything when it comes to making America great again. And he, he wanted this for everybody. He didn't say for a certain group of people, no. He, well, I guess when it came to, when it comes to uh, selecting the right person to lead the job so that everyone can benefit once America has made it great again or, or once they see their true potential, that was the only time I heard him say anything, you know, related to a group of individuals. It's just finding that one person who can cultivate that spirit of uh, American ingenuity, American prog um, pro progress, not progress in the way of what, you know, the leftists are talking about, progress in the way of us being better, getting good to the point where everybody benefits, not just a certain um, set of people and not um, saying that other sets of people can only be helped by those who make a lot of money. Okay, that's not the direction in which he um, wanted America to become great again. He wanted everyone to flourish in America. And um, it's just sad to see how people, uh, you know, it's sad to see how people, you know, don't, don't revisit history to see that this man never changed his stance. Never, ever, ever. And I wonder if the people who knew this about, oh, this never aired, but if the people had known this about how he, well, the people who voted for um, in the 2020 election, if they had known this about him, would they change their opinion? My opinion about this man hasn't changed at all ever since I started researching about him. Only reason why I started researching about him was because the media made him an underdog for no reason. It was only to push their agenda to get him out to plant a puppet. And now the media is learning that, hey, the American people are not fools. You want to gaslight us and tell us that America is doing great when we know and we feel it in our pockets and we see it with our eyes. So... I hope people from now on learn a lesson from this. Do your research on these individuals and understand where they're truly coming from. Read and find all the transcripts. Watch all the video footage, not just reels, even though this is just a reel here. But this is a four minute and 23 minute, a four minute and 23 second reel that gives us a lot of context into who this individual was. And he's a lot calmer in that video, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I truly think this man had, has nothing but love for America and wanted what was best for all of us. But that's just my take on Mr. Donald Trump. And, um, I hope wherever he is, he's doing good and not stressing about these fo mofos because look, he ain't got nothing on you. Okay, anyways, bye.